have here is the show in two parts. If it gets very, 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 very popular like that and everyone just piles in, sometimes it just freezes up. So that can happen. But bear with me, I say, and we will get everybody back in time. So there we are. I do apologize if you lost a bit of the show there, but not to worry. As I say, we'll get it back as soon as possible. It's obviously very heartbreaking when that happens and we lose the transmission. But here we are back with you. Excellent stuff. Dee's back with us. Lots of tap, 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 tap. So there we are. It says it will resume, but you have to actually go live again. So sincere apologies. We seem to have lost you there. Never mind, you're back. Welcome back, says D. Excellent stuff, D. And lovely to be back with you, of course. Now, I shall move on to part two. So there we are. And we will get that sorted. And um, I do apologize. We just seem to have lost you there. And uh, we've got a wee problem. No share button, no problem. Cut, copy, and paste, even a mobile. So, excellent stuff. You're uh, watching Scotty McClure. We're live on Facebook Live. We've just had a transmission interruption, but we won't let that go. Thought my phone was gubbed there, says Jamie Hughes. No, Jamie, not a thing wrong with your phone. Purely a, an interruption to the transmission. Uh, will you be back on the airwaves, Scotty, says Sean Grimshaw. Yes, Sean. There's lots and lots of meetings going on with very senior people, and there's a huge desperation. You see, Scotty McClue was taken from you all because it was too successful, and the other radio stations in the marketplace were doing their nut, right? Because it just went up and up and up. You've got people trying to play pop music in your market, right? And on comes Scotty McClue with the chit-chat. Suddenly everybody switches to that radio station. And there's a big panic. Now the radio station had changed owners. The first owners understood it. 10p in the meter, Scotty, says Scott Wishart. Absolutely, Scott. Let's all get behind Sir Alex. A legend, says Steve Burrows. He is indeed. And let's hope he pulls through. Linda Reed, dinky do, lovely to have you with us. Uh, so sorry for the interruption there, but these things happen absolutely beyond my control. You should get a wee part on still game with your patter, says Paul Skinner. Absolutely, get into Navid shop. Come on, Navid. Uh, let's get a wee bit of service going here. And then, of course, get into the old, uh, the clansman at Craig Lang. And bang the counter and say, go on, Bobby, can we get a wee uh, something here on the counter? And for my friends here, I would like to say, nothing! That sort of idea, yes. Uh, Hello, says Catherine Holmes. Hi, you, says Linda Reed. Dinky you do. I think the minimum price drinks a good idea, Scotty. Alcohol's too accessible and causes too many problems, both health and idiots in towns on a weekend now. You've raised a very interesting point there. It's all very well for our main boozers to object, but have we seen the way our towns get taken over? And of course, very often you read about there's been a, a, a punch-up, assaults, a stabbing, all that going on. So, uh, you know, a lot of that must be alcohol-related. Linda Reed says, my dad loved you, says my wee kiss. Fantastic stuff. Bless him, I say. Brilliant, says Paul Skinner. Absolutely. It's your fault it keeps crashing, Scotty. You're too popular, says Steve Burrows. No, well, that was what was wrong. That's why they tried to get me off the radio, Steve, because it was just too popular. Everybody was tuning to that station, and the other stations were tearing their hair out. They were screaming daft. They were complaining, and what have you. Tremendous. And obviously the pressure got to the management, the new management of the station, and that was too much for them. Do you remember Buck Rogers in the 25th century, says Thomas Hamilton. Now, Thomas, I haven't been to the 25th century, but I know you might well be there right now. Hi, Scotty, you're the best, says Debbie Sapphire Thomas. Dinky-doo, Debbie Sapphire Thomas. Lovely to have you with us. If you've just joined us, folks, you're watching Scotty McClue with the World's Top Talk Show. This is the big one right across the globe, live on Facebook Live. It'll be in two parts tonight because we had, as we very often do, an interruption to transmission when things just get so popular. They couldn't keep you under control more likes, says Paul Skinner. 
Well, there you go, Paul. But we only had one complaint upheld in uh, in all the years that it's been done. 36,000 hours of live broadcasting and one teensy weensy complaint upheld. And I actually said, and so did a lot of other people say, that should never, ever, ever have been upheld because you are using a word that's now not in polite use, but you are using it properly. So there you are. So we should have appealed, but you best just to get on with it. Dinky do, Scott. In fact, actually, there's not a right of appeal. I don't think that's why we didn't appeal, because I don't think there was a right of appeal against the authorities at the time. Um, as Scotty you missed the last few weeks, but I'm back, says David Steele. David Steele, you will catch up. There's so much happening. You will catch up. And we've got it in two parts. So you'll need to remember to share the two parts. Bit of a bind, I know, but there we are. How's your wee dog, Scotty, says Thomas Hamilton. Amazing Thomas. He's in his 12th year, and he took a wee fibrocartilaginous embolism, which I'm sure you'll all be familiar with, about six years ago. <clears throat> And that slowed him down a bit. Well, it hasn't slowed him down, but it did um, It did affect one of his back paws, his back legs. Uh, this will not affect people drinking in time because alcohol's far beyond 50p in bars, says Charles McLaughlin. So you think they'll still bevy up on a Saturday and Sunday night, Charles. Sharing on True Radio, as per all the best, Scotty. What was the word? Tell us, and we'll know shop you says kenny mcanulty uh, the word was dinky do so there you are uh, why do oh no it wasn't dinky. oh the word that was the word that i used uh, i used it it was a child born out of wedlock so there you are whatever happened to sky fm replacement have you ever seen or heard from him says john mckenzie i have no replacements john mckenzie who could replace scotty McClue? so there you go but uh, no, I haven't heard anything. Not a peep. Scotty, you've not mentioned the fox for a while. Is he still visiting? He is, Gary. Yes, he comes and sees me. And he goes, I can smell you, McClure. I know you stay here. So there we are. Uh, so yes, the fox is well. William Wallace is watching. A fine fellow after all these years. Lovely to have you with us, William Wallace. The man that saw off long shanks. So, excellent stuff. Now, if you've joined us, folks, why don't you go down the podcast route, Scotty, says Sean Grimshaw. Well, Sean, this is a kind of podcast, really, isn't it? What would be the difference in a podcast and the show? You know what I'm saying? Um, so, there we are. Cheers, Scotty, for telling us the word. No problem, Kenny. Hello, Scotty, says William Wallace. Hello, William Wallace. Did you do right? What's the time, folks? Can we all have another share? Try not to crash it this time, if possible. So we'll have another wee share. And uh, what I'm going to do, there we go. Excellent stuff. I shall just refresh, refresh the page. Very, very popular. Scotty, you're a legend. How do we get hold of McClue's pies? Says Chris Kelly. You go into a top baker and you say to them, do you do McClue's pies? So there we are. Wonderful stuff. Scotty McClue, the pie man. Uh, I prefer a live show to a podcast, Scotty, says Stephen Wearmouth. I think this is the best compromise, Stephen. I know you've got to look at my coupon, take a swatch at my coupon. And I know I'm no spring chicken, and I know I'm no oil painting. May as well fess up, let's be realistic. But nevertheless, I am me, and that's what it's all about. If somebody's got a problem with Scotty McClure, that's your problem. I tell you that big time. Right, I'm just seeing what I can do here. So we've got a wee bit sharing on the go. What a carry on. We lost a bit of transmission there, folks. Lovely to have you all back. Done it, mate, says Thomas. Good, Thomas, thank you very much. Let's get the sharing going. Very, very important. Now, which one's which, I have to say. Right, that's that one. So we'll get that one out there and get it shared. And then we've got the other one. Ah, yes, that's that. Right, so what I'm going to do, guys, I'm sharing part one. Uh, do you remember Frank Whoppet, Scotty? Um, I remember, who do I remember? Mr. Whoppet. Right, now, who was Mr. Whoppet, right? Tell me. Very important. It's great, Scotty, you're in my house, the new dinky-doo, says Kenny McNulty. 
Excellent stuff. You're in mine as well, Kenny. Even in Boston, stinky do, says Murray Ramage. That's the Murray Ramage. A very fine fellow. Excellent stuff. Welcome, Murray Ramage, I say. Right, guys, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue. And can we all share with our groups again? Now, I know it crashed at the last time, but keep going. Um, reruns of Weird, says Sean Grimshaw. Absolutely. You need to tell me, guys, who was Mr. Whoppet? All right. Who was Mr. Whoppet? You'll be amazed. Nick Prince, Stinky Do, come back and join us. Stephen Menzies, lovely to have you with us. You're watching Scotty McClue. And we are, of course, live the new right now. Absolutely incredible. We're having a share. So I'm just sharing out to the Scotty McClue page. I'm getting everybody sorted out as we speak. Frank Wappet was a radio presenter for years and years, Scotty. Usually on local BBC radio stations. Absolutely. But who was Mr. Whoppet? W-H-O-P-P-E-T. Uh, the Sheep's Heed Inn in Duddingston in Edinburgh has been open since 1340, Scotty. Anyone who was anyone drank in there, the oldest pub, I think, says Ian Walker. Ian Walker, you will kiss yourself, but Scotty McClue was a frequent visitor to the Sheep's Heed in Duddingston. Excellent stuff. Wonderful old pub. And I used to pop in and have a light refreshment when I was in Edinburgh. Uh, before that, I think he was a singer, Sir Stephen Weirmouth. Yes, but this is Mr. Whoppet. W-H-O-P-P-E-T. Might be P-P-E-T-T. -T. There you are. Dinky do, says Rod Stewart. Dinky do to you. Now, do you like the idea, guys, that we might even do a big quiz? How would that go? Do you fancy if we did a quiz? Would that be amazing? I'm just seeing what's happening here, folks. Um, there we go, there we go, there we go. And uh, that's us live. We're back with everything here. Tremendous stuff. Right. Good evening, Scotty, my main man, says John Finlayson. John Finlayson, lovely to have you with us. Now, whoever shared just before everything um, went a bit funny, if you can do it again, uh, tax on a sheep's heed new, for God's sake. So there you go. Does anybody know what a poor man was in the early days in a Glasgow pub? I'm talking 1700s, things like that. Does anybody know what a poor man was? Good evening, my friends, to David Fisher. Uh, a quiz would be great, says Charles McLaughlin. I think, but how do we plan this? I'm wondering about an inter-place quiz. Now, do we do it inter-country? Look at this, Stephen Menzies. Was it Donald Campbell's teddy bear mascot? Stephen Menzies, you are a genius. A genius. I know you might have looked it up, so don't feel embarrassed me calling you a genius. It was when Donald Campbell had his mascot. I would like to call him his lucky mascot, Mr. Whoppet. And uh, he always took him when he was setting a world speed record so they are mr whoppet and when donald's boat when the bluebird just head will kid that's the only way to describe it when she cartwheeled in lake coniston uh mr whoppet came up he popped up into the lake amazing stuff mr whoppet and i think gina his daughter will still have mr whoppet i don't know what happened to mr whoppet but i would imagine that gina uh, Campbell will have Mr. Whoppet. Perhaps we can find out about that. Charles McLaughlin says Popper. Uh, Popper says Reginald Clark. So there we are. Uh, where are we getting this? What is that one, guys? Scotty, who's the most famous person you've met? Says Chris Kelly. Oh my goodness, Chris. I have met so many famous people. I'll tell you where you'll see a very famous man. Uh, a British man. If you go on to Scotty McClue's website, www.scotty-mcclue.com and go into uh, photos or pictures and uh, let me know who you see in there. Uh, I was down last week at Lake Coniston's of Stephen Menzies. Yes, what was the wee pub that Donald used to drink in? Was it the, the Sun Inn? Is that right? Am I right? Uh, a hawker, says Sean Grimshaw. Absolutely. A hawker. 
somebody who hawked things, but a hawker would originally be, I think, probably somebody that had a hawk. So there we are. Um, I, that's what I would do, read it, because a lot of these old names like Fletcher would be the person that made the flights for the arrows, you see, and the Adrenor, somebody that would drain fields, Mr. Drainer, that sort of thing. So you think about names, where did that name come from, Mr. Field? Wonderful. Good afternoon, Scotty, says Wadge. Wadge, dinky do. good afternoon to you. Where are you watching again, Wadge? Do let us know. Eggs, says Rab Hill. Yes, eggs. <coughs> Evening, says Andy Hughes. Dinky do. how are you, says Wadge? Wadge, I'm absolutely fine. Sadly, our show stopped tonight. Int transmission was interrupted. The figures were just going up and up and up and up and up. Transmission got interrupted and uh, we lost a lot of people. Uh, but they'll no doubt come back, I would say, if everybody shares. How about a few words and prayers for Sir Alex Boss's Murray Ramage? Absolutely, Murray. We do ask for help. So if everybody in the universe sends positive energy to Sir Alex, let's hope he will pull through this because uh, he's a great guy. And as you say, a govern man. So the rest of it, a good Glasgow man. It's funny because Sir Alex and I have followed each other about. I worked for Grampian Television in Aberdeen in 1984. And I remember going along to a function. It was a kid's Christmas party. And Alex Ferguson came in. How lovely was that? And they were all so excited that he was there. The children were so excited. It was tremendous. Great to hear your voice again, says Peter Barrett. Thank you, Peter. Lovely to hear from you. Ian Hornby's watching. Biffy Elizabeth Smith is with us. Hopes that Alex gets well soon, says Wadge. Yes, thank you, Wadge. I think everybody sends good wishes and strength to Sir Alex and, of course, to his wonderful family at this time who will be supporting him. Is it no squeeze box Sunday, says Ian Walker? No, no, don't be ridiculous, Ian. You're never getting away with that. The squeeze box is here, and I shall be giving you a tune. Dinky do, Scotty. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Can it really be 20 years since the days of hearing you on Century 105? Remember you said you'd been in talks with some powers that be. Yes, Mark Doran, I can't press see more. Otherwise, I could lose the broadcast. Uh, Scotty, what's your views on the Sun newspaper? Well, as you know, I used to write for the Sun. So there you are. I had a full page in the Sun. And if I remember right, they kept it going for two years after I'd left Scotland. So there you are. But obviously, um, you know, as an executive of the Sun once described it, it's a, it's a Marmite product. But there you go. But at that time, there was a huge war going on. Uh, a circulation war between the uh, Sun in Scotland and the Daily Record. And I'm wondering if it was around 620,000 a day each was selling. So there you are. It was something like that. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. If anybody knows the circulation of the Sun in 1998. Gordon Roddick, dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. I salute you, sir. A very great man and very, very supportive. One of the country's finest announcers. I asked the wife the day, what's for dinner, sweetheart? She said, oh, I can't tell that, Rab. For goodness sake, uh, I was in Grampian Afford Motor Museum with my wee lad at a smashing time and uh, breathtaking run home through Glen Shee in 20 degrees, 22 degrees weather. Glen Shee, very beautiful Alistair King. Like, shared, and invited. Right, guys, can everybody watching this broadcast, and remember a lot of people will not be allowed to see it, can you please share, 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 share it with all your groups. Very, very important. Cheers, Scotty. I'll keep it short. Do you have resources for phone during Facebook Live vids, says uh, Mark Doran. Yes, we can, Mark. We can get through on the messenger. So there we are. It is possible to get in touch if you fancy that, but you must hang on. Scott, I think that the big ships are coming to Greenock this week. Can I remember? Oh, a big ship. Can I remember its name? It's the third biggest in the world. I need to get down to the Lyle Hill and get a photo. Ian Walker, I've seen it. I don't know if it's still there. It was there on Friday. Almost doubles the size of the town. 
I drove along uh, Eldon Street, the one behind the Esplanade, and you could see it clear as a bell, towering, towering over the town. So there we are, great big cruise ship, wonderful. So there you are. And I saw a lovely wee vessel that sits at the harbour called the Rover. And she was built in 1964. She was built at Hugh McLean's in Renfrew, if I remember right. And I was on board the Rover in 1964 when she was brand new. Oh, smelling of fresh paint, tremendous. And we got a run round the harbour in her. Terrific. So there you are. Clyde Marine Motoring Company, a wonderful company. And uh, the Rover. 1964 amazing stuff i can't believe that uh what's that 54 years i'm from belfast says chrissy lynn there's nothing wrong with coming from belfast chrissy lynn lovely to have you with us i see so there you go uh take the bonnet off and i'll fun you says rap hill <laughs> there you go rap fun away excellent stuff right have I missed it? Oh, no, I've got my dates wrong, says Ian Walker. No, there might be another one coming in, Ian. I don't know. Don't take my clues word for it. Check it out yourself. But certainly, it was there on Friday. I promise you. Uh, so there we are. What a size. What part of Scotland are you free, pal? Says Chrissy Lynn. I uh, lived in Mary Hill in Glasgow, Chrissy Lynn. So there you are. And I'm also free green oak i'm a branch of the green oak tree you can see my webbed feet from where you're sitting so there you are marvelous stuff but of course what's all over the country in aberdeen in edinburgh in carlisle in newcastle in preston in manchester in london in nottingham in sheffield twice love that good old hair mull says uh, sean grimshaw dinky do lol says chrissy lynn lol to you chrissy lynn right let's have a share guys bit of sharing and uh, then i'll maybe play your tune and you have to guess what it is all right very important so let's get sharing do, 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 do. we should have shared music so there we are i've got a guy who's in touch with me this week and he says scotty we want to buy your show we want to we want to uh, up your production values. I said, well, we shall see. Uh, instead of a hard border in Northern Ireland, the Greens are going to build a hedge. What a carry on. Of course, I suppose if Ireland did unify again, then that would be the end of your borders. But then there would be one. Uh, there would be one between the UK and Ireland, wouldn't there? And of course, Ulster, if I remember right, is eight counties and they only annexed six in 1922 nearly 100 years uh best wishes to the legend uh john lambie says john adams i still stay in mary hill says uh thomas hamilton dinky do tom end of shakespeare street that's the stuff i didn't know what the creek is in the border issue says chrissy lynn I didn't know what the creek is in the border issue. Well, of course, there's no real border. I remember sitting in a wee pub right down in the south of Ireland. I was down in Clonakilty and uh, round about Cork as well and all that sort of stuff. And I can remember uh, somebody said, ah, there's no border really, to be quite honest with you. So there you go. Playing the dueling banjos on your box. I might do that. do 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 Dinky do, Scotty. Johnny from Radcliffe in Manchester. Where can I purchase a flat cap like the one you're wearing? Well, I got this one in Ilkley. Ilkley Moor Batat. On Ilkley Moor Batat. That actually just means on Ilkley Moor without your hat. Bat, hat. So there you are in Yorkshire. And uh, of course, uh, I mean, that's in Yorkshire speak when Ilkley Moor is in Yorkshire. And I came out, and as you know, the moor rises above the town above Ilkley there and I went into a wonderful shop that sold my kind of stuff and I got a bonnet so there you go Rock Hill Scotty says Thomas Hamilton I know Rock Hill very well you're pretty close to Partick Thistle at Fir Hill there uh, the Viking in Mary Hill yes I know it very very well so there you are that was a haunt of mine in a Sunday night tremendous stuff now 
Why are we doing for time, guys? Are we getting enough sharing? I don't think we are. My goodness, we've only got about 10 minutes left. <coughs> now, I've got... Okay, I've got this for you here, and we've also got the pipe organ, so we can do that for you. Uh, Scotty, I used to go to Ireland a lot when I was a wagon driver. Used to get a lot of verbal in Belfast just because the trailer had England written on it. Oh yes, I mean, if you're from Scotland, it's a different kettle of fish. Perhaps Scotland and Northern Ireland should link up. Scotland should go independent, Northern Ireland should go independent, and they link up. Scotland and Northern Ireland. Done it, Scotty. Another hour nearly gone. You need two hours, Scotty. There's no time for the squeeze box, says Ian Walker. Ian Walker, there is always time for the squeeze box. If I can find it. There you are. Just bear with me. It's in here somewhere. So much stuff around here. There you go. Always, always time for the squeeze box. <laughs> Just to annoy Ian Walker, ladies and gentlemen. Scotty McLeary will play you a wee tune on the button key melodion. It's not a squeeze box as such. It's the button key melodion. So there we are. And I'll see if I get it. Scotty, stay on all night. Nearly light sights as Ian Walker. Nonsense, Ian Walker. There is no rush. <laughs> that guys there once was a shepherd who lived on a hill no sorry there once was a shepherd who lived on a lone away on a hill in a hut built of stone um he it withstood the wind it withstood the gale the shepherd whistled gaily and the dog wagged its tail <laughs> wonderful scotty my missus says a big hi carline she used to have to listen to you in a room and Maud didn't approve says scott ferguson lots of Maud's didn't approve but that just meant that everybody listened to Scotty McLean. Well played, Scotty. A canny spell melodian, says Ian Walker. No bad, Scotty, says Neil Gov. Thanks. X Factor for you, Scotty, says Kenny McNulty. Top class again, Scotty D. Gurley. I've got a wee feel of The Boxer by Simon and Garfunkel in that song. Yes, The Boxer. Simon and Garfunkel. How fabulous. They bridge over troubled water. Had a lovely weekend in Hellsborough last year. Charles Rennie McIntosh's Hill House is a beautiful building. Hi to everyone north of the border from Liverpool, says Mark Doran. Can you remember whose house it was? Can you remember who the client was that Charles Rennie McIntosh had that house built for, Hill House, in Hellensburg? Uh, so there we are. Right, uh, Susan Copeland Powers watching. Dinky doo to you. Lovely to have you with us. Now, also... Would you like a wee tune? What can we give you uh, on the pipe organ? What's that called? Another great show is always Scotty. Must have been John Logie Beard, says Ian Walker. No, Ian, it wasn't John Logie Beard, but John Logie Beard was from Helensburgh, as was Henry Bell, the man who uh, designed and built the Comet steamship, a replica of which you'll see at Port Glasgow, just at the superstore there. It was actually for Walter Blackie, 
the publisher. Blackie's the publisher. Good night, Scotty. Have a good week, pal. See you Sunday. The trumpet volunteers of Susan Copeland Power. Very close, Susan Copeland Power. Yes. Prince of Denmark's March, I think it was. Went in from a gentleman's op after having kids, Scotty Nurse said. I'll put the radio on the bridge over troubled water was on. I said, uh, you're taking the mix. <laughs> Stephen Weirmouth. I once went into the doctor and I said I'd like to inquire about a vasectomy. She said, to be quite honest with your face, I don't think you'll need one. Um, is that Capaldi? Uh, music says Ian Walker. Very nice, Ian. Dinky do. Right, we've got a couple of minutes left, folks. Can we have one more big push? A massive share from everybody. If you've just joined us, you're very, very welcome. You're watching Scotty McClure. It's Sunday night, nothing gets past me, and we are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the World Sort Broadcast Platform. We are global, we are international. Scotty, Run Rig or the Proclaimers, says Scott Ferguson. Excellent stuff. You need to pawn that box, says Ian. You're very talented. Thanks for a great show. Dinky Doo, says Charles McLaughlin. Charles, it's a great privilege. Guys, if you're ever feeling flush, go to Scotty McClue's website, www.scotty-mcclue.com. And if you think, yes, McClue's entertained me for 25 years, uh, pop in a couple of pounds either on PayPal or GoFundMe. You'll see the logos there on the website. Over 10 million people have visited the Scotty McClue website. I had a dafty on um, this evening, not on the show earlier going, what's this all about? So, no, I couldn't make head nor tail of it. So I told him to go and carry on with his two-piece jigsaw and to refer to the instructions. There we are. Uh, some people come on and, you know, they exhaust their IQ of one. What happened to dance with your granny and your auntie Fanny, says Bobby McLaughlin. No, still around, Bobby. Dance with your granny and your auntie Fanny right across the floor. When you get to the other side, shut the door. Uh, your carer will miss her bus. It's nearly lights out. Good night, Scotty. Fabulous show as always. Excellent stuff. There's somebody ringing. Time to dash and uh, look after your dear selves. Alan Brown, last minutes. Alan Brown, dinky do to you. A very fine fellow in Washington in D.C. So there you go. Rob, I'd love to come and talk to you, but we're just about to run right out of time. What a shame. There we are. Uh, John McKenzie, the Glycel Bank to Scottish Opera. That was some change all those years ago. Don't you miss banking. I wish I had a million lives. I would love to have done all these things. So there you have gone up the banking line. But of course, the muse beckoned. The muse beckoned. So there we are. Night night, Scotty. So Susan Copeland, Power Three, beautiful kisses. Mm. Night night to you, my darling. Thank you very much, Scotty. Who's paying for? Oh no, we're not getting into that. Michael McGuigan. There's a moose loose about the hoose. Was that another song? Yes, Lord Rockingham's Eleven. Now Scotty says David Steele. Great show again, Scotty. Thanks. Time for me to go, and of course I shall sing you the song. Right, very very important. Goodbye, everybody, goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of winter, zine, au revoir, and a cheery oh. Have a fabulous week, my darlings. Have a lovely bank holiday. I shall see if I can play us out here. stuff good night my darlings and dinky do oh